Today we are going to be talking and about a minority language. Writers from Quebec, one from Catalonia. Uh, immediately to my left is Moot. Uh, her first book, The Short Doesn't Make the News, won the Prix des Libraires de Adrien Choquette in 2000, a parody of autobiographical fiction in short story collection, Are You Married to a Psycho? at the Governor, Governor General's Prize. She also, to her left, is Dominique. Dominique Fortier holds a PhD in literature from her and literary translator. On the proper novel, was first published in Quebec and the Rose Award for Fiction, the Prix des Libraires du Couture en Cambo, and the Prix Single for the Screen. To Dominique's left, La Dicne, Nicolas Dicne. Oh, I made your, I made your, my, my sight line is obviously flawed here. I, I, Please forgive me. Um, is Mykola Rabchuk. He is a research associate at the Ukrainian Center for Culture. Also a member of the editorial board of Critique of Southeastern Europe. He has published poetry, criticism, and essays. His works have been in languages and have been distinguished a Polish-Ukrainian Kaptula Award and the Bene Marito. Now is the aforementioned Nicolas Dicne from Quebec published his first collection, A Treaty of the Small Circle, in 2002. He won the Anne Ebert Prize, among others. Beginners was published in 2009 for the weekly newspaper, Voix. To Nicolas' left is Teresa Salam. She is a translator from Barcelona, a translation center in Spain for seven years, writing her own novels and translating them into Spanish. A Not So Perfect Crime won the 2000 Best Noir in Catalan, and a short was shortlisted for the 2008 Salon Her works have been translated into several languages. We have three Quebec authors, one Ukrainian, and I wanted, I thought we would open our discussion by asking um, the Quebec you work in what's considered in your country, but you actually live in your respective cities, in Montreal, in Barcelona. Um, how kind of just are minority language? Do you think of yourself as a minority language? Dominique? I don't think I'm not that conscious about the, the fact that, first, as you said, uh, we I live we live in uh, the province of Quebec. Where people speak French, and we live in Montreal, which, but uh, where I would say the majority. So uh, the French institutions are well established. There are universities, uh, magazines, newspapers, public. I don't feel like angles or so powerful. Okay. And it's surrounding. All right. Nicolas. I agree with Dominique that on a day to day feel like we live in a minority. There's no um on a day to day basis, but uh, I know that uh, with Dominique and that's in whether uh, finally fought this the same the situation in minority whenever we try back. And we're even uh, I think we're unconscious uh, and constantly but uh, rather uh, all. Uh, place. It might look like a, a, a just with a distinction, but it, it is, we think every day we can get to work about how for several reasons. Um, there might be some specific challenge. I would like to write, but I won't write because there are about like 20 persons who will buy that book. The idea of working for a small readership, readership is very small, is a constant preoccupation, but I being part of minority, I think that's slightly different. So what is what is your experience? You, obviously, you are Salona. Um, do you have the same thought that uh, Nikolai has expressed about the that? For you? Well, uh, in fact, it is not a minority language. If you compare, like uh, Norwegian, for instance, the the question is that Catalonia is and uh, uh, has the uh, knows understand and but not all the Spanish uh, understand Catalan. So I think that really, <coughs> I'm a minority in Catalonia, but we feel we are a, a minority because this is uh, about uh, the two languages that are like uh, Catalan and Spanish in, in, on our society. And especially that there are uh, a lot of in the, the Spanish Spanish language, but uh, politicians, 
and the way and the, the difference. You know, Spain is, is, a, is a country with not uh, language but four languages: Spanish, but as well uh, uh, Basque and Catalan. Uh, would you say the situation in Ukraine, Russia, and the Russian language is similar to that Catalonia and Spain? Uh, yes, not the same, but uh, very similar. Uh, the language is, is a language of uh, at least population, and at least two thirds of the native language. Um, but um, social inequality, I would say, because historically marginalized and uh, became and the class second rate language, language of rural community of um, uh, while uh, Russian uh, used to be say white language is a bit black language so mm -hmm. in social categories. Okay, um, and other marginalized language, I think that would certainly apply to French in Canada at some point. Uh, uh, what is your experience of, of that? I would go uh, the same. Nicolas doesn't really. Um, uh, Thing we work when we work on the thing, but it's um, when the book gets gets get translated and then in other countries or in Toronto, you feel <laughs> like <laughs> like um, Toronto week. So we feel like a minority, and because um, the the French as a minority, even if we were like uh, petit cousin, just like strange creatures, not there. And uh, so that's when I feel as a work, I, I don't. And the writers, in, the three of you in Quebec are ill minorities, uh, in that you are writing in Canada, but also it's, um, Nicola, uh, shape or inform your work, your relationship with greater French literature? I started being more French, just like Francis Norton. You know, those stories about you make the subtitle for the French market. So many times, publishers in France, not readers, people from the industry, saying, oh, there's more Quebec literature, you know, but there's a language barrier. So very often, there's this feeling that we speak French, but it's a different flavor. Some, you know, it's not totally compatible. And I think it's part of the hard to get into the French market slash readership, call it as you want, uh, reasons. And it's true that we get published in France. I, it's incredibly efficient in France. So um, I just decided I would uh, work toward getting translated very early in my side. I'm going to get translated. You've got you know, the opportunity, but it was very early, I uh, so decided that English market should be more important than French market. Outside of Quebec, of course, my, my base reads, I will never write for outside of Quebec first, I still have base readership. But outside of Quebec, it's much more important. translated Jesus Christ in, in German. It works better for me in German than in French. So, and so, you know, with which publisher you get the word. So, I'm, I'm not saying I'm an example of how it works, but you know, I, I very few Quebecers who get a career in France, a real career, or even a, a real uh, addendum to their um, Dominique, you had mentioned when we were talking earlier, the government uh, automatically provided a translation from a Quebec work to English for a Canadian publisher, almost. or? Almost, okay, but no. But they actually, you have to submit, uh, uh, but it's much, much easier uh, in um, translate English Canadian American authors, and the same is true, is that if Canadians do translate a Quebec author, mm -hmm. he can get money from the federal government, and so it's a customer thing, actually, as if, if the work comes from France, he has to pay the translation. This kind of helps, I, I think, relation to Quebec and the rest of Canada, and I, I love what you said. Other countries in Toronto, <laughs> we, we really had, uh, well, I do, that uh, Ontario and all the big Publishers or English Canada. It's kind of foreign for us. I don't know which France or uh, Toronto is is farther. They're really both, yeah, foreign country. I just because I I love reading French book since I was like five years old. And I had taste to see and I didn't know that it had been hundred years ago for me. It was just 
it was a bit and, and weird looking just because it was in a book. So just the language of literature always was but that was the, the main characteristic of the thing. Uh, Teresa, you translate your own books Spanish. Um, do you generally publish the Spanish tra um, simultaneously with the Catalan or shortly? What is the usual publication schedule? Uh, if you write in, in Catalan or in, or in Basque, it's, it's very difficult to find uh, uh, to publish your, your works in Spanish. So uh, I, I, my, my, my books are published in, in Spanish but they hear uh, later. But uh, anyway, I, I, I would like to explain how it is to, to write <coughs> Catalan in text. Because uh, I, I, I have readers in, in German, I have readers in Italy, and even in, in, in English, but very, very uh, little readers. It's very difficult if you write in Catalan to, to get a publisher and to uh, await the interest of the readers. Huh? So, uh, I, I, I don't know. This was your request. Yeah. And your request. Would, would you say that how is publishing in Spanish to the success of your book, would you say? Well, it is not really. Mm -hmm. uh, because in, in, in my case, I have been added into other languages uh, than Catalan. Uh, on the other hand, I think it's important to be translated in Spanish because uh, uh, Spanish is a, is, a, is a big, it's a big market. And even for foreign publishers, it's easier to read Spanish than Catalan. And on the other hand, because Spanish is a language that I also love because I am bilingual. I mean, I am bilingual Catalan and Spanish. So uh, I think all the Catalan writers uh, would like to have uh, a more close relation with uh, our colleagues in, in Spain. And well, I hope that in the future, maybe, <laughs> the situation will, uh, will change. Because now it's really, it's really amazing <coughs> that the uh, people that are translated into uh, German or Italian are not still translated into, into Spanish. Mikola had mentioned that he felt it was almost more important to be translated into German than into English. Um, how crucial do you feel it is to be translated into Russian? Are, you've been translated into eight languages. Are there other languages that you feel are more important for the success of your books? Uh, well, work? Uh, it's also more important to be translated into German. I, I, I'm very surprised that Germany is, uh, is the country number one in translation. Germany is not the biggest one, it's not as big as America. It's not the richest country, but uh, it's the country which translates the most. Uh, as to the Russian, you know, um, basically they don't translate Ukrainian because uh, I, I think they have some sort of bias. They, uh, typically, they have um, attitudes like you know Robinson Crusoe versus Friday. <laughs> so Friday recognizes superiority of Robinson is okay. Which Robinson Crusoe loves his Friday, but as long as Friday is obedient. As soon as Friday sees it, not Friday, I'm going to call it a joke, it's an unspeakable name, and this guy is probably crazy. Either crazy and should be cured, or uh, is um, probably is influenced by so, like American or Polish or German, which is also, also bad. So, uh, of course, of course uh, we have some contacts, and many writers uh, can, can translate themselves. In. And this is, uh, of course, this is very strong temptation because everybody who wants to to be published uh, in a higher circulation uh, tries to, uh, to to get or even to write in, in Russian. So we have a kind of division of labor. We have very good, serious literature written in Ukrainian and a lot of pulp fiction uh, produced in Russian because uh, it's a market, so to say. Uh, but I believe it might be the same in the, in, the, in Catalonia. Who in Ukraine? Uh, Ukrainian, fiction and Russian. <laughs> and Freddy needs to get off the to change his relationship to Robinson Crusoe. Um, Nicola, how important you felt the importance of being translated into English um, and into German? How does writing French, or does it um, affect your writing? Does it in your writing? Are you um, are you conscious as you're writing? 
of writing in French for that relatively small market that you mentioned? Um, not, not much, but a little bit for a simple reason. Um, that since year 2000, mostly I've been, uh, most of my books in English, I'd say two thirds of my books, uh, of what I read in English, um, excluding the internet and, and stuff I read online, which probably makes it, you know, almost do a naughty person. Um, and therefore I very often while writing, stumble upon this uh, specific thing that it's so much like to use, but there's no French equivalent. Or uh, I come up with the English word, or an English syntax, and I do correct myself all the time. So it's a bit annoying, but that, that's about it. You know, I mean, that's my basic language. Uh, Dominique, are you reading in English, as opposed to reading in French, would you say? I would say, um for pleasure, only in French, because I read only in English for my work, because I'm a trans, so, so it ends up being maybe 50-50, very different times and for different reasons. Um, what Nicholas says is a familiar experience, too, because when I spent all day in, in English, or at the end of the day when I try to write in French, sometimes the, the so perfect words come and they're in English and not good, but I want to hear the, a former teacher of mine a few weeks ago called François just prepared the, the Pleiad edition of Milan Kola's work. And he was talking about the fact that uh, Kola um, grew up in Czechoslovakia and started writing in Czech and then moved to France and switched to French in the 90s. And so people asked him, well, still Czech or is he French? And his answer to that was, he's neither, he's a novelist. And I just, I love that answer so much because I, it, it's not just like a, a smart word, but it's, it's, it's that, the, what I was trying to say earlier is that, Post, I think, said that the language of literature is the language every day, but it's not the same. So, of course, the language used to write is important, the, the words you use are important, but there's such a thing as I feel as language of literature. And of, of course, Cone has, has um, over the years replaced the English translations of his works in Czech with English translations from the French version. Which, yes. um, For him, actually, the French he needed to have a, a version that would be understood by a large number of people, and so for him, the French translation were actually the equivalent of what our English dreams are for us. I mean, the, the translations that could be understood by people, so they have the same value as the originals. Uh, Nicola, would you say that your primary influences or your literary influences um, are from the great Ukrainian literature you realize with perhaps a tad of the Russian pulp uh, dropped in? Well, uh, basically uh, I grew up uh, on uh, foreign literature. My, when, when I was a teenager, my favorite reader was uh, American science fiction or fantasy literature. Uh, we can read uh, both Russian and, uh, and Polish, because Ukraine is in between, and uh, at least Ukrainian intellectuals can read easily Polish. Uh, and I use, actually I use four languages besides Ukraine. Besides, I mean, I, uh, sometimes I write, I can write in Russian, and this skill during Perestroika Perestroika especially, because uh, Moscow was more quite liberal at the time. Um, sometimes I write also in Polish, and uh, I can write at least articles uh, in, in English. Um, but, uh, but, but basically, basically uh, from the very beginning, uh, we had um, some sort of, of European myth. Ukraine can exist as long as it's Europe-oriented, so otherwise it would be absorbed by the big neighbor. It's like, you know, sleeping in the bed of elephants. This is not my formula, it's uh, Pierre Trudeau did uh, some 40 years ago uh, in Washington. Uh, he told that it's, you know, to share this land mass with the big neighbor, it's like, like to sleep in bed with the elephant. Uh, so we have this elephant, of course, it's, um, we should care about, all the time we should care about, uh, about this elephant, and all the time we have to find some, you know, some alternative, some symbolical alternative. And this alternative, uh, since 19th century, was found somewhere in Europe. So Ukrainian literature is, is very, very uh, ox occidental, I would say. So of course we know, we know Russian, we have many Russian friends, uh, and, uh, and colleagues, uh, but basically in, in, in genders, in style, even in the employment of a league, which is not very unusual in the in Russian tradition, uh, Ukrainians are different. Yeah. Uh, Teresa, would you, is Spanish 
the elephant in the Catalan bed as well? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think so. But um, well, uh, I was I was uh, thirty years old when Franco the Dictator died. So that means that I I studied at uh, school in Spanish. And then I learned to, to read and write Catalan at the university, despite my, the language of my family is Catalan. So in Italian, there is a lot of people that speak usually Catalan, as a mother tongue, but that still uh, doesn't know, uh, don't know, they don't know uh, to, not to read, but to, to write uh, correctly. Uh, I think the, the relationship between uh, Catalan and Spanish in, in, in Catalonia, or like in a city like Barcelona, that is the, the, the city that I, I live, it's, it's different. Because uh, these uh, two languages, Romanic languages both, that are uh, in contact every day, uh, they influence each other. So one of the things that I try to do in my novels is to reflect the, this uh, uh, not pure Catalan language that is spoken uh, mainly in the streets. No? Because there, there is, there is an, an important gap, in my opinion, between the uh, literary Catalan, the literary language, and the real Catalan that people spoke in the streets. It's a, it's a language. Uh, with a lot of uh, words or expressions in Spanish, or even uh, translations into Catalan on expressions that are uh, from Spanish origin. So uh, I, I think that we, as, a, as writers, we, we we have to reflect the, the way that people real uh, speaks. So we what I try try to do in my in my novel. Uh, on the other hand, I, I am very proud to be bilingual. I mean, so I think it's uh, it's fantastic, no, to grow up in two languages, and, and I, I think it's a pity that uh, in 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 Spain, in my country, some people uh, don't realize how fantastic, how good it is to be bilingual. Um, and in terms of growing up bilingual. Um, Nadine, Dominique, Nicolas, did all of you grow up uh, speaking English and French equally? Or Nicolas, what was what was your experience? Oh, purely French. Purely French. And, yeah, and we start learning English um, more than years. <laughs> in school in uh, 10 years old, but it's kind of, you don't basically learn anything useful in the classroom. So I think I first started speaking English when I needed to grow up over it. Yeah. There you go, love, always love. <laughs> Crossing the minority and majority border. Um, Nadine, would you feel that, um, do you feel that your writing is sometimes informed not necessarily by actually living in this, we keep saying the minority environment, but not only living in a country where English is spoken, but also um, writing French, having read English? Um, I think so, yes, that my writing is uh, informed by my reading, mm -hmm. and I read, I study in French literature, I've done a master in French literature, but my, when I read for um, my pleasure, it's mostly American writers or English writers, mostly dead writers, but... They are the most cooperative. <laughs> <laughs> A few living writers that I really um, I learn from as well, but I um, really like the the time gap and the classic quality and to escape the modernity. And because um, mm, my fiction is really inspired by modern, but modernity and daily life. So when I read, I, I like to. Um, to try to go see what's under the modernity and that's universal and temporal. So that informs my life. 
Nicola, what about um, your writing in Russian, as a, or your reading, excuse me, in Russian, as opposed to, say, um, Polish, for that matter? Which would you say has... Reading or writing? Um, I would say, how has your reading in, say, Russian or Polish informed your writing in Ukrainian? Uh, well, I'll say, of course, uh, of course Russian was uh, mandatory. It was uh, compulsory. It was taught in school uh, actually much more intensive than, than Ukrainian. Um, so of course everything that is mandatory is not very welcome, uh, not, not very well perceived. Uh, Polish was not mandatory, but it was attractive because um, uh, you know I grew up under under communism, and uh, Polish communist regime was much more liberal, much uh, much more flexible, and uh, and because of this we could we could uh, uh, get a lot of uh, good literature and translation also in Polish. Many, many books, many texts were forbidden in Sudan, but they were available in Polish. Also, the, uh, in Western regions of the country, we could watch Polish TV. So again, it was another incentive to, to, uh, to, to learn uh, the language, which is very, very proximate, so it's not so difficult to, to learn. Um, so I believe it was more important for me. It, really, uh, it was a really uh, window, it was a view where, uh, through which, uh, World literature came in. I read uh, I read a lot of uh, Western writers in Polish translations. And although you can't, uh, were you reading them in Polish translations, um, in translations from languages that you could, in which you could read the original? Uh, no. You know, uh, in the Soviet Union, uh, the learning of Western languages of any foreign languages was not necessary because it was closed country. So it was like like ancient Chinese. You could you could learn it just for fun. Mm -hmm. And I I had some you know, basic English in school, but it was absolutely uh, dead language in that country. <laughs> We'd like to think now, perhaps, um, <laughs> that we understand. Um, I would ask all of you: uh, Do you think of yourselves, the Quebec writers first? Do you think of yourselves as being part of? A Quebec tradition? Do you think of yourselves as Canadian writers? Do you think of yourselves as part of the international French tradition? Dominique, what, where would you put where would you put yourself? <laughs> or what is I perhaps better to say what is your relation? What do you feel yeah. your relation or your position vis-a-vis -vis all three of those ways? It's very difficult to answer because I, I don't like to look too closely at what I do for fear I don't know I might break it. And just look at yourself and try to figure out exactly where you fit. I, I'm not sure it's such a good idea. Um, I I feel quite like literature has changed a lot in the last, I would say, five years, very recently. Uh, I think it has become much more open, uh, much more diverse, uh, more modern in a way, in a weird way, because there's, in what I do and what Nicola do and a few others, a strange sort of return to the classics in sort of a way, but um, I'm, I'm definitely influenced by what's going on in France, as well as what's going on in the Anglo-Saxon world, as well as what's been written in the last 500 years. I, I feel like maybe nowadays what I write is also influenced by TV, because <laughs> I think there's a lot of uh, actually very talented people that Right for TV, yeah. and so it sort of has something to teach us, I think, in a way. So dialogue and building scenes and <coughs> characters. But I don't know if it's it, because I'm a Quebecer or just because I'm a young writer. But I don't really feel like I belong either in Quebec nor in Canada nor in France and somewhere. I feel like I belong with. Yeah. Oh, it's a, a novelist. It's a novel. Yes, yes. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't really um, think about this, although um, I'm a short story writer. I've written two short story books, so I know that my influences come from the United States and like. Carver really influenced my, my work. And I know that the short stories I've 
written wouldn't have been the same if I hadn't uh, read Carver. Um, but to um, situate myself in the Quebec tradition, where it, it's it's really hard. But I think my my models are more um, Anglo-Saxon than than French because I think it's a matter of a, of vision. The uh, English writers are more uh, concrete. They show their characters in action. And I think the French, they, they just, not the 19th century novelists, but the, the contemporary writers, they, they think too much. It's, it's really, I read a book and I only see them thinking and going with theories and and I, I don't like that. I'd like to, to read about the character and to to really believe that he's real and that I learned from the Anglo Saxon. Like yes. <laughs> um, Nicola, would would you agree do your would you say that most of your English language reading has been has been American as opposed to say Canadian English certainly? Not necessarily. Um, often reading in English has been a way for me to bypass the, the French, the translators from France. Uh, for instance, I, I read all Haruki Murakami in English because the Parisian slang was getting on my nerves. So uh, sometimes it's just a way to you know to avoid the culture of France. But yeah, no, I, I, I come from all sorts of places in the English that I read. But mostly I read in English what has been written in English, usually. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, do you read, as a rule, would you say that in Quebec, uh, obviously this is a generalization, but is the English language writing that's read predominantly Canadian English, American English, British English? Oh, American. Uh, Definitely was American. Twilight was written in, in, in the US, no? Twilight? Quite like. I mean, if you, if, don't ask me what, what I'm reading. It's just say what <laughs> most people read in, 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 in Quebec. It's going to be, it has been Harry Potter for a long time. It was in, you know, from the UK. And then you've got Twilight and there. You've got, that's what people read. That's not what I read. But it's if you look good. at the, the mass of it, it yes. It's, it's not that they don't read it in English necessarily, but if they, you know, if, if you look at what's read in English, that people see the same titles as in, as in French. When the last Harry Potter was published in English, the seventh, uh, seventh book. Uh, it made the first position in the, um, in the best-selling list in France in English. It had you know, beaten every title in French in its original version. So basically, if you look at what people read in English and read, people read in French in Quebec, the big thing will you know, eat, pray, love, what's that? <laughs> Stuff like that. And you see that in Australia, you see that everywhere. That's, you know, the massive culture. Nicola. By the way, by the way uh, Harry Potter was uh, published first in Ukrainian, uh, faster than in Russian, and, and many Russians had to read it in Ukrainian. <laughs> <laughs> they complain, but you know, they couldn't wait to come here. Latest work at me has been published um, earlier in Spanish, was the way for it in English, and I'm jealous because it's Spanish. <laughs> uh, Teresa, what is the... I, I ask you the same question for Spanish literary culture, Castilian literary culture as opposed to Catalan. Um, what what is, is Catalan literary culture, uh, what is the relationship of, say, the Spanish literary tradition? Um, what, how is that, how does that influence contemporary Catalan writing? You mean in my case or? Oh, in your case or in general. Oh, okay. Well, in, in, in my case, I, I write uh, crime fiction, but uh, from a satirical point of view. Mm -hmm. Because I, what, I try, what I am trying to do is to, to describe, uh, ironically, uh, from a satirical point, uh, my society. So uh, I don't feel really uh, related with uh, Catalan authors, but especially with uh, crime fiction Catalan authors. And on the other hand, uh, like uh, Nicola, I, I grew up uh, reading mainly 
for any literature. And I think, uh, and, and, and of course, reading the Spanish, Spanish literature. And one of the authors that I think that influenced me was Manuel Vázquez Montalbán, that uh, uh, writes in, in Spain, but also the English, because I, I share with the English writers the sense of humor. And, and I think that uh, uh, in this moment, it's, it's not a, a, really, a relationship between uh, the Spanish and, and, mm -hmm. and Catalan literature. They live, uh, is it even the Spanish? Back to back. Back to back. But on the other hand, uh, the, Spanish, the Spanish tradition is an uh, important one. And I think that uh, all, the, all, the, all the Catalan writers, uh, we know the, the Spanish tradition, but not, it's not the same on the other hand. Not all the, all the Spanish writers know the Catalan tradition. And, uh, and certainly the strength of literary culture in Catalonia was reflected in the fact that Catalonia as part of another country was the guest of honor at the Frankfurt Book Fair, which is generally reserved either for entire countries or as a few years before that, the Arab world, all of it. So it certainly indicates the strength of, of uh, the Catalan, the, um, so the, the literary culture and also the strength of the, of the publishing industry there. Um, Mikola, what is, what is the situation of the publishing industry in Ukraine and Russia? Um, how more publishers in Ukrainian? Um, what is your sense of the um, of this very, the strengths of the uh, the various of the different publishing cultures and communities? Well, uh, first of all, the most important thing is that uh, publishing uh, publishing is, is independent. Fine, it's great as achievement. Yes. In twenty years, that writers can write whatever they want and uh, publish whatever they want. The government doesn't care. Big, big deal. Um, uh, but uh, we don't have really powerful publishing houses. There are a lot of them, they are small, and uh, um, typically they uh, start with 2,000 copies uh, circulation. And then they can uh, double if, if necessary. Um, and, uh, and because of this, as I told you, uh, many, uh, many writers who want to be commercially successful, they try to publish uh, their books in, in Russian and they right in Russia. Uh, as to the serious writers, of course they have other way, alternative when, when they are published either in Germany or in uh, Poland. This is alternative way. Um, so, I don't know what, what can be next. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody is minority language within this global world. The only, the only global language, majority language is English. All other languages are minority languages. Yes. Whether you like it or not. Well, on on that topic, um, how crucial is it for all of you for your work to be translated, not only translated into English but published in the U.S. Teresa, how important? I, I know you publish with Bitter Lemon in the U.K. Um, how important do you think public, English having your work available in English in the U.S. is? Well, if you write in a, in a minority language, and, and Catalonia is uh, Catalanese, uh, it's very, very important to be translated into other languages in order to have uh, more readers. Uh, and also because uh, if they translate you, if they translate your works, uh, uh, the interest in your own country grows. Because uh, one of the characteristics of the small countries is that uh, we are uh, very, very critics with ourselves. <laughs> so sometimes we need uh, to be the, the recognition of other readers uh, for, for have recognition in, in your own, our country. On the other hand, I think that uh, the translation uh, 
when 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 a work is is translated into other languages and interested other readers of other cultures, that means that the language it's not so important. I mean, there are other things that are important. At least two. And again, that you are part of Kundera's nationality, the novelist. Um, and uh, Nicola, Dominique, Nadine, you all have English language Canadian publishers. Um, how important do you feel it is to have your work available in English in the US? Nadine? <coughs> well, it's, I don't think it's available in the US. I think it's only available in um, English uh, Canada. But of course, it would be important for me. But um, I think my impression is that it would, it would just get lost in <laughs> with so much books that are published. So it would be nice uh, to add on my resume, but I think that from, from another point of view, there's so many books published in, in the US that I think it would be a really hard work to make it mm -hmm. a really uh, special area to uh, distinguish it. So would you say that you feel your work gets more attention or more uh, that your book that your work is better in a, a better place in a, a Canadian English language publisher where it can be promoted with other as a Canadian work specifically? Um, well, I think when it's uh, the of course it's a translation. Yes, it's a translation, but there is maybe more interest for English Canada to see. Uh, what the young Quebec writers mm -hmm. are, what kind of literature we're doing. I think that to present it in the, in the US, it would take another, uh, like, I don't like that word, but kind of branding or oh. to, to present the mm -hmm. book, it would need a, another kind of a, a color, like from writers, young writers from Quebec in the US, I don't think they would go like, <laughs> it would need something else, something else than just the geographical or political. Dominique, what do you think about um, Canadian English language publication as opposed to US? Well, my book isn't available in the US either, so. Um, would I you, think you agree with Nadine that sure it is? probably right that if it didn't come accompanied with some kind of I don't know what, it would, it would get lost in the sheer mass of production. Um, I've had an experience though that's kind of, I think, similar. We were talking about the fact that the only majority, real majority language uh, now is English. And I would add to that maybe uh, pictures or movies or because I am not published in the US, but somebody actually bought the book to make a movie out of it. And that's the translation that everyone is talking about. That is like the big thing that is the, so it's funny because movies are not a real language in my, in my opinion. Well, they're a different sort of language. And that's certainly not gonna be my movie, it's not gonna be my book anymore. I don't mm -hmm. even feel that the translation, the English translation is mine. I feel it's more of the translator's book. So it's gonna be something else entirely, but that's, an experience that kind of resembles. So in a way, it would seem that we're talking not so much about, write, not only about perhaps writing in a minority language, but with books, writing in a, in a minority form. Language, yeah. yeah. With book publication. Yeah. Uh, this is more like a comment than a question. Like, a couple of things are hard with being a minority language and being a It's very practical. Mix up everything so that cultural identities and the 
from somebody. You don't really know if they're speaking English or they're Finnish. So I do. Well, this is, uh, I think there are some fact political things that should be part of that. Yeah. I have to say, does, does that matter? Nicola, does that mix of Ukrainian versus Russian? Or? Well, uh, people can understand both languages. We don't have uh, It's not a problem of with majority, with minority. Yes. Uh, but uh, this is a very interesting phenomenon, which was when people uh, in Ukraine at the time um, spoke, uh, especially common people, a mixture of both languages, which was sign of, of, uh, of course it was transitional from people uh, get open, uh, got urbanized and this is that uh, official censorship did this uh, mixed language in dialogues. The Russification, which was officially denied. Russian writers could use it. I found that when uh, this is used by Russian writer, no, it's, it's another language is Russian. So uh, this uh, subject as uh, uh, serious. When it's exposed, uh, it's not a message with more. It's, it can be a political battle message. Uh, of course, today we don't have to use an NK play with small languages uh, things. And to your other question, it's not so bad actually. Leo Tolstoy uh, wrote his uh, entire pages in French. And, uh, published Leo Tolstoy with uh, so what? <laughs> <laughs> decisions we could barely with the author but with the publisher. Accessibility, not because content, but of, um, again, looking at the, you know, as possible. Um, obviously. You're all writing from a cultural specificity with the language of writing. When your words are translated, this culture does get lost through the translation. I, for one of you, is from Montreal and those here well this place and the spirit of my book. But I say they're coming from another country in Montreal there was was No no it was it was, it was perfectly I I fly rest. My translators my first novel was actually about English explorers from the nineteenth century. And when uh, she left in English uh, gave me the first pages of that which was my boyfriend who was there with the French. <laughs> <laughs> spoken in English because they were in original version look to him like I don't know what that's worth but <laughs> yes. yes no I, I would say that uh, the the work of uh, good trust to to uh, communicate exactly uh, the, the table uh, so uh, this uh, in the specific differences disappear in the he this this record and we would then of uh, uh, translating from country to the majority language where there would be privilege, but perhaps not so much as there would be countries or cultures. Who's <laughs> living I've heard? In a novel, um, oh, I forgot, and, and it, since it comes from a novel, but it felt like a, you know, how it happened. Uh, all, um, they, but then it gets popular, and it's, you know, so much that it's not worth going on the second edition. The Arab world had any impact. Oh, yeah. But you don't observe copyright, so. Um, in the middle, that there? It's actually more about the content, but do you, in your life, between saying loyal locality, Prince tradition, the language, Talking about universe, more universal as any Jewish writer in some way, the Jewish feel that fall between being that specifically the question to the Ukraine, the culture, or do you feel freedom more universal? Subject? Well, in, in my case, uh, because I write Catalan, but I'm very critical with my society from inside, and I think the kind of make are not to the specificity. But many other countries, you know, like uh, power and so on, that uh, writers we have to be 
and also the Scandinavian. I will also mention that our current Adult Borders uh, folk literature from Quebec and includes stories by Nicolas Pin, as well as six other people, those writers and poets. Um, on Words Without Borders will include our next Afghanistan and also writing from Iceland. So, out, uh, we hope you.